Well, it's personal between me and I'm going to do you some serious harm, you big stiff idiot. The Untouchable True School Sports Empire proudly presents something the boxing game's been missing. Hey, what's going on? It's your boy BT. I came here to talk some boxing with the thousands of True School Sports subscribers. All right, so a real interesting story coming out of the heavyweight division. You know, Big Bang Zhang, he's, he's in line for some big potential fights next year. Um, the Saudis really, really wanted to be in some big fights. So th th this video will be a bit of a two-parter. It'll be a bit of a two-parter, but it'll be everything... Jili Zhang related, so just bear with me. So the first part of the video, I gotta address this. I gotta dead this in the water, right? Because Zhang was speaking of fight hype recently, and um, the fine folks at Pro Box TV they they actually transcribed some of the quotes from the interview and wrote an article about it. So shout out to Fight Hype and Pro Box TV. But he was talking about Philip Hergovich and the fact that you know he questions um, his resume, the, the guys he's fought since Hergovich scored a controversial you know victory over him in in, in twenty twenty two. And here's what uh, Zhang had to say about Hergovich. He stated the following, and I quote, When you look at Hergovich's resume, he was gifted a win by the referee when he beat me to become the mandatory challenger. Hergovich has, ha has had two pretty low-level fights to stay busy because he is scared to lose his mandatory position. He fought Dempsey McKean from Australia over 12 rounds, and he kept hitting him on the back of the head. He then knocked out Mark DeMori, but he kept hitting him on the back of the head because that's what he does. You know, so there you have it. Um... And he also he also wanted to call Hergovich the professional of hitting on the back on the back of the head because that's what he does every single fight. So Zhang said a whole lot. He said a whole mouthful there, but I got I got to call Zhang out. I, and I know a lot of people like Zhang, and I like Zhang too. But I just don't like how he's getting all this credit for losing because that's what he did. He didn't beat Hergovich. He lost. It was a close fight. Couldn't win either way, but he lost nonetheless. He's getting all this credit for losing to Hergovich. And yes, he did fall out with two great, devastating knockout wins against Joe Joyce. I applaud him for that. It's not like he's chopped liver. It's not like he's not a legitimate heavyweight contender. He's, he's great. I love Zhang. I think he's great for the division. But he's starting to become a little overrated now. And, and, and he's getting too much of a pass from people because I've spoken to Hergovich about doing a Zhang rematch on this channel in an interview. And he's said he'd love to interview. Uh, he would love to um, do the rematch with Zhang. And, and he would knock him out in front of all the Chinese people in China if they want to, right? He loved that rematch. But when I've heard Zhang... Uh, talk about what he wants to do. He calls out everybody in the mother. He's called out Fury, he called out Joshua, he called out the whole division, but he never calls for that rematch. And that's probably one of the more realistic fights he could get. But he don't call out he don't call Hergovich out for that. But why? Because he know he knows what's gonna happen to him in rematch, right? Um I, I think the one time that I did hear him talk about it, he said, Oh, he feels he doesn't need to fight Hergovich because he felt he won the first fight. Well guess what? That's not how that's not how life works. You lost. You're not the mandatory challenger. So why don't you fight him or try to push at least Try to act like you want to fight because he's saying a whole lot about oh, uh, he's this, he's that, he does this, but he didn't say nowhere, nowhere in this whole, uh, you know, soliloquy of, of words did Zhang say I want to fight Philip Hergovich in a rematch. So what that tells me is deep down in his heart of hearts, he doesn't have that real conviction that he could beat Hergovich again because if he was really that good, he would just put Hergovich out like like he did to Joe Joyce. But he know he won't because he, he knows he won't because he fought the worst Hergovich that will ever exist in a boxing ring. And he still lost. So, you know, just want, I wanted to get that out there about Zhang. Um, just from what he said with Pro Box and Hergovich. I'm, I'm getting tired of it. He puts down Dempsey McKean, right? But Dempsey McKean was legitimately undefeated ranked contender. Southpaw, just, just, just like Zhang. Was an undefeated ranked contender. Southpaw, just like you. No no different. All right? Because Zhang, Zhang's getting all this hype now. And don't get it twisted. Zhang is an Olympic silver medalist. Zhang is good. But before he fought Hergovich... Nobody cared or thought Zhang was that good because he was the guy that dropped Jerry Forrest three times and got a draw, right? So he should thank Hergovich for having such a bad night because if it wasn't for that, for that, his uh, his stock wouldn't be as high as it is. But if you really want to fight Hergovich, just just say that. Just ask for the rematch. It's not that hard. But nonetheless, let's 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 move on to the next thing because it's just not about Hergovich and Zhang. Zhang is being linked to a pretty big fight. We all know that Anthony Joshua is going to be fighting uh, Francis Ngannou. They're, they're, they're saying that March 8th is the date in Saudi, so we'll see how it goes. But um, the co-main event for that card, Zhang's name is involved in it, and I think it's a very intriguing and very interesting fight because the guy they're saying Zhang could fight as the co-main event on that card is none other than the bronze bomber himself, Deontay Wilder. Now, that's a real interesting fight because, you know, if... 
I don't believe in judging fighters stri strictly off their last fight. Like, I don't believe in the whole notion of you only as good as your last fight, but a lot of people do. So if we're going off of last performance, Wilder didn't look great against Parker, got shut out damn near, um, and Zhang put out Joe Joyce with a straight demolition job, right? So on paper, people a lot, a lot of people are going to pick Zhang to win this fight, and they should, right? But this is actually, I think, a much better stylistic fight for Wilder because... You know, guy like Parker is, is is fast, is speedy, got 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 amazing conditioning, granite chin, championship level experience. He's a, he's very different than Zhang in a lot of ways. Parker, Zhang is is got heavy hands. He can box. He's a southpaw. He can punch really hard. But we know that the Achilles heel of a guy like Zhang has always been his stamina. Has always been his conditioning. So I genuinely believe that's where maybe. This, this new style that Malik Scott has been teaching Wilder, it could be able to uh, pay dividends here because if Wilder is able to pin, frame that lead hand and keep Jang at a distance and work that right hand in and, and still be that big punch we know he is, I think he could wear Jang down and get a stoppage like later on in the fight, you know? But but also at the same time, Jang is a big human being. <laughs> I'm sure Jang's going to outweigh Wilder by like, what, 30 to 40 pounds maybe? So it's also about Wilder not getting Long Jada to lean on him and, and get him tired and things like that. So that's, that's, that's a good fight for the division. And I, I'll tell you this. If Zhang could win that fight, then his stock goes up exponentially. And then I think the prospects of a hergovich Zhang rematch are even bigger and better because they both would have increased their, 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 their profile. And as for Wilder, he beat the guy like Zhang. Zhang stocks on, on an all-time high due to the, the great performance against Hergovich he had last year where he, looked, where he exceeded expectations in a loss. And then the two uh, big knockouts against Joe Joyce... He's probably has one of the highest stocks in the heavyweight division. So, you know, I think that, that fight's going to do crazy numbers in China. It's going to have like a gajillion views in China, right? And if he beats Wilder, then, then all of a sudden you, you, you can talk about Zhang fighting, you know, the biggest names in the division like uh, Joseph Parker, Anthony Joshua, um, even the Fury Usyk uh, winner because he has that much pull in China where I feel like he could command a big fight to come to China. Uh, so we'll see how it goes. I mean, look, I don't, I don't want to make it sound like I'm hating Jang. I don't hate Jang. I, I very much do like watching him fight. I just get a little frustrated that he'll say he'll say everything about Philip Hergovich other than let's do a rematch, you know? So nonetheless, that's the news. What do you guys think? Uh, Her, uh, Jang questions the resume of Hergovich, and then, he, and then now he's linked to fight Deontay Wilder. So, uh, yeah, 2024 is a big year for Big Bang Jang. Uh, how, how do you guys feel about Jang against Wilder, and how do you guys feel about Jang um, down the line in a Philip Hargovich rematch. Uh, leave a comments down below. Make sure you guys take the time to subscribe. And like I say in every single one of these videos, you can love me or you can hate me, but I'm just a kid from Daniel. So until next time, take your eyes. Thank you for watching another video on the untouchable True School Sports Empire. For more great boxing content just like this video, click right here and make sure you subscribe. Much love from sunny South Florida.